Hello everyone. Welcome to this video where we're going to be looking at how we can design lattice steel transmission structures using S-Frame uh, according to ASC 10 guidelines. So I have a model that's already been created for me. It's a lattice steel transmission structure. I have a variety of different loads and load combinations as you can see representing different gravity loads, wind loads, earthquake loads, service loads and more. I've already ran the analysis. If you'd like to see we can look at some of the results like the deflections for example, uh, the axial forces that are within the model, uh, and I can even display the, you know, the maximum values uh, within each element, if that's of interest to me. But we're not so concerned about the analysis at this stage, other than just using that as kind of a tool to help us better understand the design code checks that we're about to perform. So what I'm going to do in just a second here is jump into the steel design, but I want to first just show you under the settings preferences dialog, Within this, I can go to the design codes and I can select the design code uh, that I want to use. In this case here, I'm going to be using the ASCE 10-50. Now I'm going to jump into the steel design, build steel design model here. And then within the code input window. So there's two avenues that we can take within the steel design process of S-Frame. We can validate that existing sections that we've assigned to our members are meeting all the design code requirements. Or we can also optimize the design choice of sections based off of the demands on our sections or our members and find the best section suited for that. I'm going to go through both examples today. Uh, we're going to start with the code input window, which allows us to go through the validation process of checking existing sections against the design code. So I have uh, a few different steel angle sections. And I've set this up already to be able to run the analysis uh, or the code check on these sections according to the different load combinations in my model. So I'll just click OK. We have about 800 members in our model total and we're going to go run through this code check process. And now we can see here, we get code utilization ratios for all of the different members in my model according to the different load conditions that we've examined. And again, this is according to the ASCE 10 provisions. We can view this in a number of different ways. So if I didn't want to see, for example, all these utilization ratios, which for these short braces and so on, uh, can be a little bit hard to visualize. I can look at just color coding without those ratios or I can look at uh, perhaps the pass fail status and see where the failing members are and where the passing members are. And if I wanted to any single member, I could double click on and I could perhaps just view that in more detail. So I see this failing member right here. I can right click and look at code details. Maybe I'll just zoom in first and look at this failing member here. And I'm just gonna right click on it and click on code details. And if I just drag this over to my other screen here, you can see that we have for each member that we selected a number of different load combinations that we've analyzed. In this case here, it's found load combination number one, found this element to be in compression and it was actually failing due to slenderness according to clause 3.4 of the ASCE, say, excuse me, ASCE 1015 code. And we have a utilization ratio of 1.133. Same thing for load combination four. Again, that's also in compression. Uh, so we get an idea for the performance of this model based off of the original sections that we assigned. Obviously, we know that some of them need to be reevaluated and perhaps upsized. Uh, but just to give us kind of a ballpark idea of how the structure is performing, we can go to the file menu and print key results. And this will give us a high level understanding of the entire structure's performance according to the ASE 10 code checks. So just click to include all these details in the design check uh, key results. I'll drag this over to the other screen here and you can see this is again just a higher level summary of all the data that we looked at earlier, but it includes every single member, not just the one that I might have clicked on. So here I can see I've got actually two different design groups with different sections, as you can see, and I've named them secondary and primary members and the secondary members actually seem to have the highest utilization ratio, 3.6 according to the beam column stability and we can actually drill down into that for this governing member in that design group, which is, as we see here, uh, it, the section is an L102 by 102 by 7.9 section. And it's governed by flexure and, inter and compression interaction check. 
giving us a fairly high utilization ratio according to clause 3.12-1. If I scroll, continue to scroll down, I can see all the different members' utilization ratios in a tabular format. And when I get to the bottom, I'll be able to see additional details related to the quantities of materials that are being used. So here I can see the steel sections, the length of steel that's required for this structure, uh, the weight, the surface area, and if I had cost data, I could enter that as well. Now we know that these sections are overutilized for the most part, and there are ways of actually upsizing these sections manually using the code check override tool. Uh, but what I'm actually going to do instead is use the design input window. It's a little bit more, I would say, advanced approach, uh, not so much in complexity, but just in terms of its ability to handle uh, lots of data. So I'll start off by just selecting uh, one group of sections. And I can look at, for example, my primary members here. And I'll select all the other primary members in the model. And I'm just hiding everything else. And I can select this folder that has a subset of sections for step. So I currently have an L203 by 203 by 29 section assigned to my primary section uh, member, sorry. And I know that that's not adequate to resist the applied load because it's failing the code checks. It has a utilization ratio of about 1.7. 170% of my capacity is being used. Uh, so we need to consider other section sizes. So I can look at different section sizes within the equal and unequal legs uh, sections available within the Canadian Steel database that I'm using. And I can also look at different selection criteria. So perhaps I want to prioritize whatever section passes all the code checks but has the lowest weight or the lowest surface area if we have to paint this or, you know, there's a number of different factors that can be considered. And we can exclude certain sections if they don't meet uh, minimum or maximum dimensional limits or those sorts of things. So I'm going to stick with what we have here. And just to show you the other sections as well, let me just select one of those secondary members. I'll select this guy right here that we examined earlier. And for all of my secondary members, if I just look at the subset of sections for study here, again, we can see our original section size from S-Frame and the section sizes that we're considering, uh, knowing that the utilization ratio for at least our worst case member was about 360% uh, overutilized, we know that we're gonna have to use a larger section. So I'm letting it choose from a number of different sections uh, and it will find the best one for my applications. So with that, let's just select everything and run a design. So I'm gonna run a design for all of my different load combinations And the design process is just about to complete here. We have our results just loading up. And now you can see that we're brought to the design results window where I'm getting utilization ratios for all of the different members again. But you'll notice one difference is that the red color indicated indicative of a failing code check utilization is no longer present because S Steel has selected sections that will pass the code checks based on the range of section sizes I've allowed it to use. Now we could drill down into any of the details of these members. For example, maybe I want to select one of these and I can click on code details and I can see the section size that it's using. So for this example here, it's proposing actually a, a different size section uh, than what I might have originally started with. And I can look at code details and so on. Now, if I want to look at more specific details, I can go into the print key results and find the same information I saw for the code check, but for my new optimized sections. And here we can see we're getting utilizations that are still quite high. In fact, this utilization ratio of one uh, may not st still be at the area that we're confident with going towards a design, uh, but it certainly is getting us to a closer port, a closer starting point rather. And I can scroll through this list again and just understand why it might be failing for specific uh, checks. For example, my smaller section or my larger section is failing by axial flexion and tension interaction. And my smaller section has been upsized quite a bit, as you can see. And now it's governed by slenderness rather than one of the strength checks. Now in this example, obviously we've gone through and changed the section sizes. 
Now with that comes the, uh, the issue that we've changed the stiffness, we've changed the mass of the structure, and our analysis results are still based off of the original section sizes. So we can actually iterate on a design process that can be automated, so it can go through, update the analysis sections, reanalyze, collect a new force regime, and use that for the next set of design checks. Uh, and if necessary, choose new sections as well. So hopefully you found this useful. If you'd like more information on other design codes we support or more information about steel design and S-Frame, please feel free to contact us or visit our YouTube channel for more information.